hi family how are you i greet you and i pray that each and every one of you are strong amen so today's topic is that why me so my my answer is that why it must be you why it is not somebody else why you and this question always comes in when you are going through challenges or you find that there's something that has been going on conti uh, continuous in your life. And sometimes you reach a point of saying that, God, I have tried, but why is this thing happening to me? Many of you, almost maybe many of you or all of you out there that are watching this video, you have reached a point in your life when you, th you look around your life, when you look around what is going on. And sometimes because you can't figure out, you have tried to, with your own strength, you have tried to think on how to come out of that situation, that problem, that challenges. And sometimes it's like the more you try to come out, the more it becomes worse. And it's not that you're lazy. It's not that you're not doing anything, but it's just because this thing is just hard for you to come out of this place. And sometimes you encounter a situation when you look at in your family or among your siblings, you're the only one that is going through this thing. And sometimes it becomes so frustrating. You start asking God, why? Why, why must it be me? And why, why should it only be me? Why should this thing be only me? Why am I not getting married? All my siblings are getting married. And I'm the eldest. I'm the firstborn. And everyone is looking at me. And they feel like I have a problem. Why is this thing happening to me? A uh, member of you have asked the question, God, I try to look for a job, I try to put my strength, my, my CV, so that I can be accepted. I try to do everything to my capacity and my strength. But why are these things not happening the way I want them to be? Why is it things, things are hard and difficult when it, it comes to my end? Many of you have asked yourselves those questions. Maybe many of you have asked yourself these questions, not even based on what I've said, but somehow, somewhere, you have asked yourself, why? So I came to answer you, why it must be you. So before I explain, let me just go into the scripture, okay? The, uh, I'll open in the book of John, uh, John 9. I'll read one. The Bible says, John 9, this one. I'll read, the Bible reads, as Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who was, who, who had, sorry, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents? Um, it was not because of his sins or his parents' sins. Jesus, uh, Jesus answered, This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. We must quickly carry out the tax assigned, assigned us by the one who sent us. A night is coming and then no one can work. But while I am here on earth, I am the light of the world. So here the Bible is talking, uh, 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 the, first, the first verse, it talks by disciples. They came, Jesus and his disciples, they came across this blind man. Uh, this blind man who was born from birth, from birth, he was born blind. And the disciples came to, they're asking Jesus, so what is wrong with this man? Is he, was, uh, has he sin? Is it sin that is causing, it has caused him to be blind? Or is it the sins of the parents? And these are the things sometimes we, it, it, these are the questions that sometimes when we can't figure out the situation that we're going through we start asking ourselves did i sin uh there's i remember those days uh I, I, when things were very hard for me in in my growing up and it reached a point that i started asking and sometimes I, when i'm praying to god i'll get into the closet and start repenting that god forgive me if there's any sin that i've committed because it's like life was <laughs> life was just something else 
And sometimes I'll ask, did I sin? I'll start repenting. I'll go, I'll go and do prayer and fasting. I'll start repenting. God, if there's anything that I've done, show me so that I can repent. If I'm not repenting well, if I'm not asking for forgiveness well. And this is a situation that some people are right now. And because as you keep on going, knowing God, you come to understand that challenges are there, but it's how you contact, you can, uh, you can, mm, you connect and you position yourself when you're going through challenges. So sometimes the asking of why question is not, I'm not saying it is wrong because sometimes you're expecting an answer. But sometimes the reason that he, why it is happening to you. Look at here the Bible says, Jesus replied that no, it was not the sin, his sin or the sin of the parent. That's why he's blind. So sometimes there's what he, why you're asking why you are why you are asking it's not it, it's 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 not it's not because you sinned and it's not because your parents sin or it's not that you have gone astray or you are walking in a different path compared to the path that god had given you no but the other thing that why you are going through that it is for god because as you go down the bible says he became that man was blind what so that God should receive glory, so that the, uh, God should receive glory. So your situation, it is not uh, the situation that you're going through. It is not that uh, it is not that you sin, or it is not going, that you had gone astray. Yes, there are some things that you encounter because you went wrong. But God is a forgiving God. God is a merciful God. So everything that happens to you, why you are going through that thing, it's because it's not about you. It's about the glory of God to come back to him. It's about God receiving glory for himself over your life. Remember that your life is God's. Remember that everything that you have, it is God. So the, uh, the fact that God has given you his ability, there are some, uh, he, he has given you that life. There are some things that he has installed inside you. And those things that he has installed inside you, they, there are some people that will only come to know Christ when they see that testimony manifesting into your life. So if God had to keep you in that situation, just for two lives, two souls to come to know Christ, it is he'll do that so this man was blind so that and for uh, for the glory of god to be so that the glory of god must be it should be seen through that person through his blindness and later the bible says jesus went on and spitted saliva and the uh, spitted saliva on the ground and uh, 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 applied it on his face and he told the man that the blind man that go and wash yourself uh, to the pool of um, serum which means scent and he went he washed his hand, his face and he was able to see later at the end of the day it brought glory in the eyes of God so every every why you are asking yourself why it's because that situation God wants to take glory <laughs> look at let me just go back to to Lazarus I think most of you may know the story about Lazarus when La, when Lazarus died <laughs> when Lazarus was sick Jesus was not moved to go and heal Lazarus. No, he was with the disciples. But when he heard that Lazarus has, be, has died and is even put in the tomb for four days, that's when Jesus now said, okay, let's go and see our friend Lazarus. He's sleeping. And the disciples are like, if he's sleeping, uh -uh, they don't wake up. They did not understand that sleep, Jesus means Lazarus is dead. So he told them plainly that Lazarus is dead. So why did Jesus not go when Lazarus was sick? Why? Because he wanted when everyone's hope is gone, when everyone, when Lazarus' story has come to an end, when Lazarus' story is smelling in the grave, when Lazarus, when Lazarus' is in, story is now history, so that he can restart, restart the history and bring a new life through Lazarus. And the Bible indicates that when, God, when when Jesus gave thanks to God and called Lazarus back forth to back to life, what happened? A lot of people believed in Jesus. And that's the same uh, that, uh, that's the same uh, do you know that that's the same miracle that Jesus did about raising Lazarus? That's the time they really started plotting to kill Jesus. So if Jesus had not had not uh raised Lazarus 
they could not have they could have hated him because Wallace was preaching they hated him but what caused yeah the uh, what a uh, triggered Jesus death it was because he raised Lazarus and at the end of the day a lot of what the Bible indicates that people came to know Christ they believed in Jesus so if the death of Lazarus was necessary for many to come to Christ and so what happened he would better Jesus delays from answering you you allow Lazarus to go through sickness you allow a Lazarus to 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 to, to die he will allow Lazarus to go to the to the grave. He will allow that. Why? Because it's not about Lazarus. It's about the glory of God. Be, uh, be, the glory of God manifest uh, the the glory to be given to God, and Lazarus becomes as a point of contact for other people's salvation. So why are you going through that? It's because God wants to receive glory through you through your life. Some of you are asking, oh, when am I going to get married? It's not just about marriage. It's about God. How is that marriage going to bring glory to God? So it's not about you getting married. It's not about your young ones going ahead of you. You being the firstborn and things are hard. It means there is something that God wants to use so that other people, maybe who have given up, they'll look at your life and say that if God did it for that, you find that your answered prayers, it will be a testimony that will bring somebody's hope. It will bring somebody and uh, somebody will look at your life and they'll say the God of this one, the God of Yvette, the God of Mary, the God of uh, John, the God of uh, Natasha, the God of this is the God that answered them when at the age of this, he can also answer me. Uh, he can also answer me. And sometimes God causes you to go what to go through what you're going through so that when somebody in your situations uh, you meet somebody who was who is in your situation because you're once like that you'll be able to give a proper counseling why because and sometimes it can be a way of god birthing your ministry why he has called you to so that you can go and manifest it why because you have gone through the process so why is that thing happening to you? It's because God wants to receive his glory. The work of God is beyond your life. The work of God, the kingdom of God is beyond your situation, your problems. So if it has to take God to use your story, you to use your pain, to use, to, 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 to use your shame, to use your delay in order for other people to come to save God, he will do it. He will do it. So asking God why, it's a good question at some point. But again, when you reach a point where you are matured in the things of God, you start telling God that God, use me. If my life, you find it worthy to be used so that a soul, a life can come back to you. Then let it, uh, uh, here I am, take, it, take over. Even Jesus himself, he went through a lot. But he did not ask why he, because he knew that his life, his suffering, everything that he was going through, it is to bring glory to God so that his life can be used as a tool to harvest us. We can. It was a seed that was laid on the ground in order for us to grow from that seed. So you're, why? It's because God wants the glory to be seen through your life. It's because there's a life that is attached to you, but the only time they'll come to know Christ is when they, they saw your, your life they saw your uh, your struggle and after seeing your struggle they saw your testimony and that testimony will become a way of strengthening them and knowing so, and knowing that god can also answer their prayers it will be a, it will be a story that will be used for them to have faith in god to come back to god and they will use you as a mouthpiece to encourage a person that is going through the same situation so why you why not you so it has to be you so that the glory of god may be manifested into your life so the question of asking why god make sure as you are asking god just know that why it has to be you because your life is worthy to be used as an example or as an example or uplifting to somebody's life i pray that with this word somebody is going to be encouraged and may your life shine and as you ask why and i just want you to have it in mind it has to be you it has to be you that has to go through this because somebody else cannot go through this 
each and every person on this earth there's a there's something that they are going through and they are, god has equipped them and given them the strength to go through what they are going through if it was you going through what i am going through you will not stand it just because remember i don't speak it out it doesn't mean that i'm not going out through something but if you had to go through you can say if it, you're, you are it's okay let me handle what i'm handling so why you because in that story situation challenges that you're going through god's name has to be glorified okay so god bless you and i pray that this will be an uplifting and it will arouse your faith and the most important thing keep believing god that your story will change keep praying and know that god is in the process and is in the business of what of doing miracles and your own want you will not end in shame at the end of the day it's the glory of god and his god will surely manifest and when the glory of God manifests in your life, your life changes. I pray in the name of Jesus. God bless you. I'm Yvette and may God keep you and let the fire burn. Amen.